Thank you for joining us for the Guest and Gusto Symposium. Pass the mic, Latinx design creatives. I'm Bernardo Coronado Guerra, SCAT staff and interior design alum. SCAT is thrilled to partner with Interior Design Magazine to celebrate Latinx creative leaders making a global impact on the design world. Leading the dialogue today is Interior Design Magazine's editor-in-chief, Cindy Allen, who continues to be one of the most influential advocates for the design profession today. Under her direction, Interior Design Magazine is constantly evolving, adopting new and inventive platforms to celebrate the design process and innovative designers. Like those joining us today, please welcome Cindy Allen. Hey, everybody. Hey, Scott. Hey, students, we are so excited to be with you. Um, we're going to have an extraordinary few hours together. And first of all, look, I want to know, um, I want you to know how hard this pandemic has hit all of us, but we think about you guys especially. And the fact that we can be together and around the table or in the audience or giving each other hugs, it's terrible. But let's imagine, because you guys are creatives, let's imagine we're sitting together, like maybe in my living room <laughs> or in Paula's living room and um, and try to find our spirit to get inspired today. Uh, this is a gift for you. The talent is extraordinary. Let me tell you something. All my top, you know, my top picks, they all said, yes, yes, yes. We want to support this. So this really is a gift. Now, at Interior Design, we are all about great design and every color of the rainbow honestly. Um, but my team is a very eclectic mix and I can't do it without them. And so I wanted to share, I wanted them just to pop in and say hello. Um, so you get to meet some of my amazing team. Okay. So first is uh, my assistant, Amy Torres. She is, I call her amazing Amy because she really, really is. She's my right hand. Um, Amy, tell everybody where you're from. So I'm from Guatemala. Both of my parents were born and raised there, um, but they actually met here in Queens. And um, it's funny because we've become very Americanized, but still every day for dinner, we always make sure to have our tortillas. Um, but, you know, having immigrant parents has taught me to work hard and work for what I want. And I knew that I, I started as an intern at Sandow, our mother brand, ID's mother brand. And I knew I wanted to work for Cindy. And lo and behold, a few years later, I ended up being her right hand. So um, having my parents work hard, they've taught me, you know, just keep following your dreams and don't don't forget where you came from. And, and you guys, I just want you to know, Amy is the first person that I ever hired right when she was sitting across the table with me. Like I didn't make her wait, you know, like you're waiting for your boyfriend to call. I didn't like wait. <laughs> I literally offered her the job. And it's exactly from what she said. Not only is she smart, super smart and humble, but it was it was actually the family values and how she kept talking about her family and her father owns a small business. And I could tell that she had that kind of work ethic that um, I also really respect. So um, I love Amy. Okay, Amy, thank you for sharing. All right, next on our team, in the art department is Carlos Dominguez. Carlos, hola, Carlos. Hola, Cindy. <laughs> Tell us where you're from, Carlos. Um, so I was born in Bogota, Colombia, and I came to the States uh, when I was seven years old. So I've been here for about 20 years now, and um, I recently became a citizen uh, last year. So, you know, it's it's been a long time coming, and it was a very important, you know, year for me. and. I'm so happy to be American, but also to, to being Colombian. And, you know, it's that has influenced a lot of my design work. Yeah. And Carlos has an amazing spirit. And for any students out there for, you know, as a leader, you want people who say yes and try and get it done no matter what. And Carlos has that spirit. He's always optimistic. <laughs> He's always like team, like, is everyone OK? And we love Carlos. So thank you, Carlos, for joining. Thank you, Sandy. Love you guys. Love you, Carlos. Okay, um, a, another very special part of the team, our art director, Carla Lima. We have been together for a long time, Carla. Yes, for a long time, 13 years. <laughs> 13 years together. Yes. Um, Carla, tell everybody where you're from. Uh, I'm from Brazil, and I came here to do my master's degree. And I started interior design right after my I finished my master's. And they sponsored me my work, my two work visas. 
and my green card. And I, as like uh, Carlos, I became a like, citizen not long ago, like two years ago, I became a citizen too. She also became a mom. We're doing Zoom. <laughs> she's got her the most gorgeous baby Antonio on her lap, and she also teaches. So uh, Carlos, extraordinary, and um, she's she's dear in my heart. So love you, Carla. <laughs> and then we have our executive editor, um, Annie Block. Hey, Annie, where are you? Hi, Annie. Buenos dias, Cindy. Yeah, buenos <laughs> dias. And you wouldn't know by her name, right? Um, but Annie, tell us a little bit about your roots. Thanks, Cindy. Um, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm first generation American on my mom's side. My mom, Beatriz, was born in Caracas, Venezuela. Um, and she came to the States when she was nine. And um, like Amy said, uh, being the child of an immigrant um, uh, makes an impact on, on me. She taught me, has taught me to be brave and, and tough and, and hardworking and fair and kind and to not waste anything, especially food, as my <laughs> colleagues can attest to, and always lock my doors. Um, and um, I also was lucky enough as a child to go to Caracas many times as a child. And um, I still remember the lush vegetation and the beautiful vibrant colors and the dancing and the music. And you know, all of that has helped shape my aesthetic and, and broaden my worldview. And, and working with you, Cindy, I've been able to visit Mexico City and Puerto Rico and Costa Rica and Nicaragua and have done stories on projects I've found there and um, it's really just been such an enrichment to my life and um, you know I think being part of a, a minority makes you aware of all minorities and um, you know we're all just uh, I think that more sensitive and that more supportive to one another and working with Cindy at the magazine underscores, underscores all of that. Um, Cindy not only lived in Spain, um, but she uh, immediately launched into Spanish when she first met my mom. And um, yeah, and she's just totally committed 100% to covering the very best design, no matter race, religion, background, gender, orientation. And um, yeah, it's just a really inspiring place to be. And um, Thank you, Anne. Yes, see, I say but it's a long time ago, but I love Spain and I love the people. And yeah. more importantly, um, more importantly, that we cherish we cherish everybody and, and every single color. And great design is great design, and that's what we're always looking for. So I just wanted you to meet some of my team on the editorial side. Um, thank you so much. I know it's you know it's hard to get out there and like. You know, you did amazing, you guys. So thank you so much. And listen in and let's have a great session together. So that's my team. Aren't they amazing? Don't you love them? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so listen, okay, I want to introduce you to another, you wouldn't, you would probably don't know this, but uh, Daniel Brown, um, which is Danielle Brown, um, you'd think he was American too, so um, he's coming on. You know, you all know him as a professor of architecture and urban design. Um, he's a program coordinator and a student mentor, so a lot of you probably know him. He received his um, master's of architecture from Catholic University, his bachelor's of design with an emphasis on interior design, which we love, from Lynn University. Uh, he was named to the International Board of Hospital Art and it is an associate member of AIA, which is fantastic, and faculty member of AIAS. And he's going to be helping me. Uh, hi, Danielle. How are you? Hello, Cindy. How are you? I'm um, so yes. happy to see, see you. I've seen, I've seen him a few times um, at SCAD, and I do love SCAD so much, and it means so much that we're all here to get today. So, Daniel, you might, like, be popping in with questions, but definitely at the end for sure. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you for having me. From. Well, I'm from uh, La Paz, Bolivia, um, and that's where I say I'm from. I actually was born in Washington, D.C. Um, I come from a hybrid background as well. My father is American, um, Oklahoma, actually, oh, yeah. and my mother is from Bolivia, from, from Cochabamba. Um, we went back when I was about two, and then I was raised there, grew up there, um, and then came to the U.S. for college and have been here ever since. So. Spanish is my first language, I want to say, because that's what I remember. Um, for a long time, I tell people, your first language is what you dream in. And I yeah. keep dreaming in Spanish. So I would say that's my first language. So. 
That's beautiful. And, you know, and students out there, how many of you are going, oh, my God, I didn't know that about, about the professor. That's uh, so funny. Yeah, that's right. one of the things that I have to announce at the first day of class is make sure that you understand that I know Spanish and I speak Spanish and I'm from Bolivia because oh, there's so many right. Hispanics in the class that, I, that may not know that, right? Right. So you don't say anything bad about the professor because I, <laughs> exactly, I, exactly. Right, I get right. it. I get yeah, it. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for um, asking me to be part of this today. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll see you soon. Okay. okay. Pop in at any time. I Listen will. to thank everybody. You. Um, I just want everyone to know that um, think of, you know, you can have, we can have this conversation throughout and you can ask questions, ask it to the chat room and um, the best questions I'll try to pop in with as we go. Okay. So I just want to explain the first hour I was um, asking SCAD who the audience is going to be uh, so that I can make the best selections. And they told me, you know, the range of what, what you all can study is so broad that it made me think, hey, why don't I do sort of a double talk? One will be on the big commercial side and the other will be um, an amazing designer who is a studio, owns his own studio. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and when I say big, I went right to the top. So for big, I went to Gensler, okay, the leading design firm in the world. And there are thousands of uh, folks working for Gensler all around the world. And they're my super pals. They're amazing. They're an amazing organization, have been unbelievable during this pandemic. And they are the number one giant. So you may think, okay, I want to work for a big firm. What does that mean? That means you might be able to influence influencers all around the world because Gensler works for works with and designs with Facebook and Amazon and Netflix and Google and Adidas and Etsy and Hulu and the list goes on and on kind of amazing right so I'd like to introduce you to both of our speakers and then we're going to start with uh, Carlos uh, where where is Carlos he's coming in is he I'm coming here. in Hi, Carlos. Oh, my God. So Carlos and I have known each other for a very, very long time. He is, you know, I was talking to a, um, a, a really great friend at Gensler, Robin Claire Avia. She's the head of, well, she's the head of the New York region and just about everything else. <laughs> and I said, you know, I'm so excited Carlos is coming on and being a leader at Gensler. And she said, no, Carlos is a senior leader at Gensler. And she said something that I wanted to share with everybody because it was kind of amazing, Carlos. Yeah, she said, he's, he's the global design guardian for all work Google does with Gensler. Okay, Carlos, the person that you're gonna listen to right now with Google, he's reimagined their design principles that are directly shaping 2 million square feet in New York, New York and work around the globe. And she said, and I want you to make sure to tell him that he is one of the smartest and most talented people I know. I mean, you can't get a better thing than, I mean, Carlos, what, what, you know. Well, sometimes, so, that, sometimes people like to exaggerate. <laughs> oh, geez, oh, geez, Louise. Well, so. well, I can't wait to talk to you. And, and on the other end of the spectrum, an amazing friend, which I have to say, I love that, so Hector Esra of Esra Studios, that we did a, that we did a, um, you guys were both in our Giants, uh, yeah, Giants conference yeah. that we did together and you both met, which I love as well. Yeah, and, we met in Cancun, Mexico. Yeah. Right, exactly. It's kind of interesting that you both, because we've never, we never did a conference in Cancun. So it's kind of interesting that it all, that it all works out together. But uh, Hector is, a very special uh, designer. You guys are going to be wowed by him. Um, one thing as the student that you should know that a lot of times for the magazine, we, we find talent because they submit for competitions. And Hector and his studio uh, submit for our best of year award that we do every year. And he flew in to meet us and he was winning awards. And that's how some of these relationships starts. So that's very, very special to me. Hector um, was, well, Hector, we're gonna do your bio um, after so that we can kind of connect all the dots, but you guys are in for an amazing, um, amazing hour. Okay, Hector, we're gonna see you later. <laughs> so let's stay, remember guys, stay on the chat. And um, Carlos, we'll start with you. Carlos, so you were born in Cuba, I but was. raised in Puerto Rico. So, um, 
Yeah. Tell me about your upbringing. So, uh, yeah, I was born in Cuba. Actually, I was born, uh, a lot of people, when they meet Cubans, they think, oh, you know, you're from Havana. I'm not from Havana. I'm actually from a very small town in Cuba, but it's actually it's one of the seven original villages of the, uh, in the island. It, it was founded in 1514, but it's also the place, it's, it's the, 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 uh, the key place for the creation of music in Cuba. So I think people know that I love to dance and probably that's where it comes yeah. from. Right. Uh, yeah, and then- you know, I, we, we, That is so true. First of all, I didn't know that, Carlos, because you know we've been at events together and we always kind of end up on the dance floor. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I love to dance and I love Cuban music. But um, yeah, no, we left when, um, when I was three years old. So I, I left when I was very young. And then my mother, uh, we left as part of the whole um, air, air bridge and we came to the United States, but my mother decided to, um, uh, for us to move to Puerto Rico. She wanted us to kind of uh, grow up in a Latin culture, uh, but we had also been, um, a, you know, a, under the U.S. umbrella. And it was a fantastic um, decision, I think. I, my, my, my childhood in Puerto Rico was just incredible, and I'm very thankful uh, for that decision she took. Oh my God, that's me. Okay, so, yeah, so wait, hang on. So just, they were, I, I, I could tell, first of all, Josh, um, who does all the tech at SCAD, he's like unbelievable. But like we were wait, waiting for the images um, to come on and then I will like share some of them. So they're Carlos, oh my God. <laughs> that's that's me. That's actually me in Santi Spiritu in my hometown. In Cuba. Ah, yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, wait, wait, there's a, wait, hang on. There's a few more adorable um, was this like a first communion or something? <laughs> that, that was actually the day that I left Cuba. And you know, we when you when we left Cuba, you couldn't you couldn't take anything out. So the only thing they let you take out was I think it was two changes of clothes. And wow. my mother, of all the things to pack, she actually got me into a suit. It's something <laughs> I was I'm never going to wear again. But you know, those were the days of um, air travel, and you know, it was. So I was all dressed up and. Oh, ready. Carlos, and you were saying, and so you were saying that the family who you had done, you know, the family had done well for themselves, but then you had to like leave everything behind. Yeah, yeah, we left with nothing, basically. You, we, we Just with what we were wearing and two changes of color, yeah. And how, and was that scary as a young kid or what was that like? You know, um, um, probably it was, it probably was scary um, leaving everyone behind, especially, you know, we have extended families and I, at that age of three years old, the shock probably was huge for me. I don't have a lot of memories. I actually think it was, incredible for my mother because my father died um, the year before we left. So she, my father died when uh, I was two. So my mother had to leave as a widow with mm -hmm. nothing and two kids wow. and go into a, a new place. And, you know, I, oh my that, God. Yeah. that's incredible that she really had to, you know, it was hard. And I, I, I love the stories that she told me over time because um, it really kind of teaches you about people and what people are, 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 can do. And, you know, she was an incredible woman and, you know, I am here today because of her. Right. But, right. Um, yeah. And you were, and you were telling me a really like interesting story about ending up at the university of Puerto Rico and the, what it was like there being schooled under some amazing modernist grades. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the universe. So I, I actually, uh, graduated from high school and I decided to come to the States. I went to Miami for two years to study architecture. But then after that, I was going to go to other, another place and I got accepted into the University of Puerto Rico, which has an incredible reputation, the, the School of Architecture, which was created uh, in, uh, by, by Cornell. So Cornell established the curriculum and some of the professors came from Cornell. But, uh, and that was amazing. I really, the two years that I spent in Puerto Rico was an incredible solid uh, foundation but the school itself the university yeah. had buildings that were designed by a, 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 an architect that worked in Le Corbusier's office and it had that incredible tropical architecture you know that, that era of the mid the 50s building and our building was uh, very close the architecture school was very close to one of those buildings that I love you know that's breezeways and it was amazing just um, you know being there for those two years. Yeah, and so and you look back because we were talking about it, right? You kind of look back and go, "Wow, what a what a blessing that was!" I didn't even really know at the time at how you know how these how these things shape you as a person. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, I always go back to the teachers that you have, um, and I had some incredible people in that school. Especially, I remember um, I had this um, teacher of um, the history of art and architecture, and she was. 
she was so compelling. And I, I took, uh, so I was there for a short window of time, but I took the classes that I was supposed to take with her and I audited all the other classes that she taught. So I took two years, uh, in one year I did two years of art history and one year of architecture. And it was amazing because she had an, an incredible way to sort of talk about that. And I remember later going to Europe and sort of tracking everything that I had learned in that, in that class with her. And to be quite honest, the foundations that she gave me about the history of architecture were exceptional. And they really, really helped my career and even my schooling in yeah. terms of sort of having this great anchor about the precedence of architecture. Yeah, and, and for the students out there also, like, you know, I've been to SCAD a few times and the openness for everyone to learn and to follow their passion, I've always been so impressed by that, you know, three cheers to Paula for, you know, yeah. uh, you know an unbelievable gift she's given, um, given our, you know, our students and our world really for design. But look at Carlos, like he, you know, okay, talk about overachiever, <laughs> but you know, you find that and you dig in, right, Carlos? And and I, I remember something you told me, which was that you were, you know, you were slightly insecure about um, speaking English. And so you compensated. So tell everybody about that. Yeah, when I, when I came back after the two years uh, in, uh, so when I went to Miami, I went there because I really wanted to learn English. Well, you know, Miami wasn't, I, I, I tell my friends is I went there only to realize that I was not learning English right. and I was losing my good Spanish. Right. So, uh, right. so when I went back, I went uh, back to Ohio State and Ohio State is when I arrived and I did it because I wanted to be in the middle of America, right? Like, you know, and be exposed and, and learn English because I didn't have a very solid fund foundation I, and I didn't speak very you know, very easily. Yeah. So I arrived and I realized that I had obviously it was a handicap. Yeah. So what I did was I compensated by actually creating the most incredible drawings in the class because my drawings had to do all the talking that I couldn't do like my other friends that will get up and they will start speaking and I was blown away, but I couldn't do that. Yeah. So um, that was actually a really good way to force me to excel in areas that maybe other people didn't have to. Yeah, for sure. I mean, talk about taking something that could have been a negative and turning it into a positive. We have a question. Okay, so let me see. From um, we have a question. What are some tips for students who who are transitioning into a new culture for the first time or moving into a new country? Um, I mean, you were very, very young. Can so imagine? Let's say that they're college age and and moving in. Sure. Well, I mean, I think that my experience at Ohio State was an example of that. It was really a culture shock. Uh, I was, in a way, it was it was a little horrifying to be quite honest. But what I did was, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I, I love the lens of anthropology in work, right? So one of the things that I do is I study culture, I study behavior. So what I did was I start observing what were the things that identify the people in that community. And that gave me the opportunity to relate to them. And that was the, probably the most important bridge. The mm -hmm. other thing that was interesting is that I had never been in a place that also had a very incredible, diverse community of Latin Americans. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had this duality where I was learning a lot about the American culture, while at the same time, I was learning a lot about all the Latinx culture. And it was uh, the community of people that were feeling like me. They had been transferred to Ohio State but they also were looking to sort of connect with their roots. And that also became an incredible way to sort of see the world in a much more, uh, in, a, in a broader way. Because really the, all the South Americans that were there, I had never really had that contact with Chileans and Peruvians and Colombians. And, and that was a, a really great way to prepare myself for really for the world in a way, because um, I think that that notion of absorbing and being a sponge to kind of everything that's around you, it really, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing for design, by the way. Yeah, I love that. I love that, Carl. Somebody else is, I wanted to pull up, um, hang on a second, I'm going to pull up your home. Um, but meanwhile, someone was asking, was it hard for you, like, to grasp when you were first learning? Was it, was it hard? Because also, because I suppose the language barrier, too. I, um, when I finished my, my uh, college, which I was at Ohio State, I, trans I went straight into my master's, which was in Chicago. Um, and, you know, I remember being there on the first day of class. It was a different group. Obviously, you're a master's now um, degree level, uh, which is quite different than college. 
and Chicago was also a different big city. And I remember being in this class with this incredible professor and he talked for about an hour. And I remember thinking to myself, and it was a really important moment because I, I realized that I didn't understand a word of what he said, not because it was the English alone, but it was sort of the level of thinking that he was sharing yeah. was something that with the language barrier was a challenge. And I told myself, I said, oh my God, I'm never gonna make it. Mm. I'm never gonna make it. But obviously it's one moment of fear. Yeah. And I'm not, I was not gonna give up. And then, it, you know, a year later, I realized where I was. And, it, you know, it's that moment in time where you can never give up. Because even though you might be telling yourself, this is not for me, right. it doesn't mean that you cannot do it. Right. And do you, do you sort of remember, because, you know, they're asking questions about, you know, transitioning and going into new cultures. Can you look back and say, yeah, I, you know, slowly things started to make sense. As you said, don't give up. It's hard at first, but it does get better. Yeah. Um, I think it, what was what was interesting was that I was fascinated with the people there, but the people there were fascinated with me too. That there was actually kind of an interesting exchange. I, love that. I thought I was the one that was benefiting from that and trying to catch up. And all of a sudden, the people that started surrounding me because they were the right classmates or other people I was meeting, they were also being very very um, inquisitive about sort of my background. And then at times they start somehow, which I think is a very American thing, where they reflect certain things about what you do in a way that sort of maybe some people can take it as they're making fun of you. But what it was, it was very, it was, they were, it was a way for them to somehow realize the difference in language and how sometimes I will say something and I will crack up laughing. And then I, what I would start doing is I would start doing more of that. Because yeah. it was a way of connecting. And, and, you know, that's how you create a bond and a personal relationship that, and by the way, those friends are still my friends. To right, this day. right. Yeah. So, uh, so th there's a good message there that in, in many cases, and, and plus we're a much more open society now, wouldn't you say, Carlos, but people are, you know, Americans, you know, or who, who will you be your friend are fascinated by, by you. Yeah. And yeah. once you can understand that, um, I remember because I was living in Europe for a long time and I didn't was learning the language. It was I was in um, Italy and Spain. And um, I remember how much of an outsider I felt, too. But they they were all fascinated with me because like I was. This exactly. yeah. So but but um, but it's but it is hard. So but yeah, but don't and, be hard on yourself. One at a time. I, like, and the other thing I will say to that is that, you know, sometimes people are self-conscious about their accent. And some, and then people work hard because I said, one of the best things that we have is an accent. I know, you know I love your it's, accent. Really, it's actually a really, really good thing. So I, it's funny, I haven't lost my accent, even though I've been here for like almost what, 35, 40 years now. Yeah. And, and I'm happy that I haven't. And it's not because I'm trying not to lose it. It's just, that's the way I am. Right. But I have people that joke and said, you know, when Carlos finished a presentation and he walks away, you realize that he's got an Ohio accent, but he just sort of played up. His kind of Latin accent. So. Yeah, so embrace it, everybody. Yeah, accent is good. Accent, yeah, is, accent is, good. is good. Wait, I want to show this picture because this is in Chicago in the park. Oh. There he is. Like, what? What was that? So that you know, um, yeah, the, the Millennium Park has this great fountain designed by um, um, a, Anoush. Isn't it Anoush? No, it's not Anoush. It's, oh, it's, it's Pensa. It's Pensa. Ah, huh? Yeah. And, and it's got a thousand faces. And when they were uh, doing the, I, I, I was a professor, I was a visiting professor at um, uh, the Art Institute of Chicago. So they approached me and I'm one of the faces. And even though I've never seen myself, this is from a friend of mine that has an apartment that overlooks that. And one day he was in there looking and he saw me oh, and he took a picture and he sent it to me. So it's, it's the crown fountain at Millennium Park. Yeah. Um, ama amazing. Look what look what what can happen to you. You could be on face in the park, which that park is amazing. I do want I'm just going to show people this. Oh. was You said this was your childhood home. Yeah, this is where I was born. And yeah. I went back to my hometown for the first time in um, 50 years after I left. And uh, I had in, in my birth certificate, there's the other my address. And I went there and it, it was an incredible thing. I mean, I, I can actually probably get emotional talking about it. Yeah. But, you know, all the all the houses around them have been painted, which is very rare. But our house, you know, it's hard to find paint in Cuba or to get paint in Cuba. So this house has never been painted. So it's probably the paint scheme that happened. So that's probably 50 years of not being painted. Wow. Um, th there was a lady and I, I, I wanted to go in, but obviously yeah. 
and there was a lady that I saw and I kind of went there and I said, oh, hi, you know, I'm, my name is Carlos and I lived in this house when I was a two year old and I left, you know, 50 years ago. At first I was afraid that she would think that I was coming back to ask for the house or whatever. And then I just, I don't know what took over me, but I just told her, said, is it okay if I come in? And she said, oh, absolutely. And then I walked the house and it was like, it was uh, such a moment because I remember having the very few pictures that I took from Cuba where I see where I'm in that house as a baby in a little corner. And as I'm walking, I look at the corner and I know that's the corner where the picture happened. So that, the fact that I had that experience that I was able to walk that house was in, an incredible, incredible thing for me. Amazing, amazing. Okay, I'm good. So we have to fast forward because um, I just want to talk to you like about that all day. But I want to fast forward. Let Let's get into Gensler. So you are um, a senior leader at Gensler. Tell Tell everybody. I'm going to just show some images while you talk about um, how you've excelled at the largest design firm in the world. Sure. Um, well, it's a big topic. I know, I know, I know. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. I, I've i always, um, throughout my career, I studied architecture. I got a master's degree in architecture. I practiced architecture for five years. And after five years of being an architect, I kind of asked myself, I said, I think architecture is a lot more than what I'm doing. And I had a friend that worked for a, an interior architecture firm. And he said, oh, why don't you interview with us? And I said, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. I went there and interviewed, I got a job, and I all of a sudden I discovered the, wor the, the world of interior architecture. And in a way, it kind of made me realize that to me that was almost more architectural because it was much more connected to the humans, right? To the people, the people that are using the space. And through that time, I was there for several years. I did a project for a company. It was one, a one of a kind in the world, an innovation strategy company. And because multiple things, I end up joining them which was a really incredible uh, thing that all my friends said, what, you're living architecture? You are like such a designer. We never imagined that. As I said, no, I'm doing this because I feel like I need to have this level of, I need to expose myself to something that I think is going to reshape my career. And it did because that particular company was like a think tank. So what you had was you had representation from all these other disciplines and it taught me how to actually look at things in a much broader and more multidisciplinary way. And it gave me skills around that. It gave me skills to sort of think from that very anthropological lens, very user centered. And then when I came back to design, because I did that for several years only to come back, I came back in a very different way. And, and to a degree, what shaped my career, especially my career at Gensler, has been by actually taking on projects where clients are asking for something that's very different something that's different from where, what they have or something that's different to envision because it's sort of a new, a new emerging thing. So I'm always the kind of unconventional thinker around reshaping or, or repositioning a way to look at something. And, and, and you can applaud. I mean, you really, you excelled in the firm because of that, that they really see the power um, in that talent, which you, which you cultivated. Yeah, I mean, I taught for 26 years at the Art Institute and I did it out of a passion. Well, I did it for two things. It's because I do, I, I do love to um, teach, but I also realized that I was learning so much by teaching this, this generation of designers for so many years. And I used to tell them on the first day of classes that I'm here, not because you're going to take a lot out of me, it's because I'm going to take a lot from you. And, and I think that way to sort of being connected to the moment in this moment in time, our culture, and by that I mean our, our larger kind of popular culture and so, you know, the, the, where society is, is the one thing that I have done by actually translating emerging trends of culture and emerging trends of behavior. And, com you know, combined with what I learned when I was in the management consulting firm around this idea of sort of looking at people and patterns of behavior and also looking at kind of um, uh, decoding all of that and then making that sort of the foundation for, for changing, changing sort of how you look at a problem and come up with something that is probably from a very different point of view. Carlos, somebody is asking if you faced any bias when you first went into the industry since you were still learning English, although that you may have, you, I think you probably had already mastered English by the time you were working at these firms, right? Yeah, when I, um, yeah, when I went to, um, 
when I start working, I was already, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was already pretty fluid. They were, you know, much more fluid in, with the English language. And I, I never really experienced um, something like that on the, on the workplace or the people that I work around. Um, I, I might have been blind to some of that stuff. I tend to be terribly optimistic. You know, I think that's probably why I do what I do is because I, I am an extremely optimistic person. And sometimes I might not necessarily focus on that. And and that might be probably for me that has saved me from some other things. But you got you to gotta charge forward. And, um, you know, we have one thing that uh, we say at Gensler a lot, which is don't ask uh, for permission, ask for forgiveness. <laughs> and I think in a way that's kind of what I do is uh, I'm just I'm just going to continue to do what I do. And if other people want to have a bias against me, um, then I, I, I just want to prove them that I can that I can do what I can do. So, I don't, you know, that's the thing, too, not like I don't know, like in, a, in the design world, I, you know, Carlos is beloved in the design world. I don't it doesn't seem to again, maybe it was more early on, but that doesn't seem to come up as an issue. You're working with the top leaders in all of these companies. This is Barclays that we're looking at. Um, you don't, do you feel any prejudice? Um, it, no, I mean, I, I, no, I, I don't feel any prejudice. I think sometimes people are looking at the, because my clients tend to be looking for something very different. And maybe that's kind of where, it, where it's at. If somebody, if I had, if my client base needed to be maybe more established people that are looking for that status quo or they, Maybe that will be an issue because they might be expecting someone something different. But if you have someone that what they want is reinvention and they want sort of kind of something different, the fact that I'm different might actually be a, something that reinforces that idea. I don't know, but maybe that's that's why it, to me has I'm not in a traditional type of um, a, you know accounts where they maybe expect that the designer should look like X because that's what I'm looking to have. And and also um, let's three cheers to Gensler because you know they saw who you were, and um, really wanted to share your best talents. And I mean, I think that's the best you know yeah. kind of example for students is you need to find what's the best thing about you. Yeah, and and I will say that you know Gensler of all the firms that I've worked was the one firm when I arrived. I, I changed jobs frequently, right? I actually was in jobs around three to five years. So when by the time I got to Gensler on my third year at Gensler, my phone started ringing with my friends asking me, where are you going to go next? And I told him, I said, this is my home. Because from the day that I arrived at Gensler, I realized that that was the design firm that really reflected what I was looking for, what I was searching for. So I did work for other firms where they were much more they were less diverse, but Gensler wasn't. Gensler was so diverse from day one at both, especially not only not only race uh, and, and but gender too, which was really important. I mean, I I come from a matriarchal upbringing, right? I mean, I was raised by my mother, and uh, and uh, Latin Americans can actually women have a lot of power, so I've always worked really well side by side with women and I think that that was a great thing about, about Gensler is the leadership at Gensler is so gender um, diverse that um, to me that felt very familiar and I think that also is why we as a company have sort of developed a culture that we are also very diverse when it comes to even um, sort of a, a expertise and discipline like we are not just a bunch of architects or a bunch of interior designers we have people that kind of span the whole gamut. And everybody at Gensler can actually go to the very, very top. It doesn't matter what your background is. You don't have to be a designer, which by the way, I heard from other firms when I was trying to promote really, really brilliant talent. And they will tell me, well, they're not designers. We're not gonna promote, they're not architects. We're not gonna promote them. And I'm like, what? Right. <laughs> so right. That's not Gensler, yeah. Right, no, that's not, not. so um, so everyone out there, um, if you're talented, uh, there's a home for you at Gensler. Okay, so Carlos, I'm going to bring up Hector, and then we're going to come back. I mean, it, the time is racing. I can't even believe it. Um, but first of all, thank you so much for sharing that, and I'll come back in a little bit. Okay, Hector, come on up. So I want to tell everybody about Hector Esra, which, you know, I am so um, touched by his work. And as I said, we met uh, during competitions, and 
Um, Hector comes from um, Mexico City, and he graduated from the University of Ibero Americano. I'm messing that up, Hector, and was an industrial designer. What I love, he also was a professor, and he became design director at Centro Study House, and he created the industrial design degree. I love that. That was in 2003. He's had his own um, multidisciplinary firm since uh 2003 called uh, Esra Studio, and he does everything. He does everything, and not only does he do everything, but he also collaborates in a beautiful way with so many other talented um, folks. But Hector, I, I tell us about um, how you grew up. Let's get started. How are you? Hi, I'm so happy to see you. Hello. And hello, everyone. And you know, you know, everyone was so excited that you were coming on, Hector. So thank you for that. Um, I'm also excited. I'm thankful. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I really enjoyed to chat with you, and well, if we have another opportunity to discuss, I'm 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 excited and happy to be here. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, so so tell us about your upbringing. So what you see there is my siblings. I'm the the guy on the right. <laughs> I, I I come from a. Uh, my father was born in Lebanon. He moved to Mexico in the in the fifties. So uh, I was born and raised like. In, in, in downtown in Mexico, uh, I live in this duality of uh, being, raised, uh, being raised as a Mexican with a Lebanese family. It was not a common thing. I, I actually realized this duality when I was uh, like 10, 11 years when I started to invite friends to, to come to my house and they see the tradition of, of, of the food we have and, and, and they start to hear my father talk. And at that moment, I realized that, that there was something different. No, I was like living my my life in in everyday basis, not understanding that that I have this uh, mix of culture. So living in downtown, you, there's some images that you uh, posting there. Yeah, living in downtown was, uh, uh, um, I think, uh, one of the things that defined me, my profession, and defined for sure my my perspective towards design or whatever I do. So this this. Uh, the downtown of Mexico City was based on top what was called the old Tenochtitlan, which, which was the head of the Aztec Empire. So actually, what you have below these colonial buildings, in, in, in many occasions, I, are either pyramids. No? So, so it's, it's, a, it's a culture full of, of, of narrative, it's a culture full of history, it's a culture uh, full of, of, of skills, it's a, a culture that, and I was born and I, uh, my everyday was walking around these buildings and my everyday was walking around. These uh, are incredible buildings, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, but they, are, they are amazing. So uh, I, I have some stories from my parents that sometimes I got lost in the museums and they, they actually find me in, 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 in the chair of Pancho Villa in the Museo de la Ciudad de Mexico, no? because I was lost. And I don't know if I have any ambition at that moment, so I sit at the chair of Pancho Villa. I love that. I love yeah, that. But, but imagine imagine to be able to, to like, your everyday basis is around these buildings. So uh, besides the museums, there are pretty amazing colonial buildings. And my everyday life was between markets. No, Like, uh, there are some images, or I don't know if there's an image of market. But, oh, yeah, I'll get to, I'll get to market. Hang on. Yeah, this is the Museo Franz Mayer, which uh, I have my my first solo exhibition at that museum. But when I was a kid, for sure, I didn't ever even consider that Can I would get my students that now he has a solo exhibition there. That's that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So so can you imagine like this is Palacio de Bellas Artes? So walking around uh, the markets uh, is full of markets. It's full of 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 colors, and you have all these. A syncretism of of, 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 of of a culture that that was a, an ancient culture and and then a, a European uh, no that Spaniards arrived and completely alter uh, the the essence of, of, of what Mexico was so uh, those contrasts no here you see tacos tacos yeah. day, tacos al pastor wow. but then in my table no the, the next day will be a, a plate of falafel or a plate of of, of no you can see this this contrast so for me was was uh i think uh what 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 makes me understand the world in a different uh, conception i'm here with all of my friends 
it was the the first time uh, that I went to the Formula One, so I was pretty excited. I didn't care about the the, the cars. I was just uh, trying to 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 know girls and. and uh, of course, yeah. so, he wants to know girls. But yeah, I'm, I'm the one on the left. Uh, like that. Those are all my friends of of childhood. I still have uh, contact with many of them, and for sure there are uh, amazing memories and and those times and those moments in that place shaped uh, uh, in many ways uh, i think my interest and, and my orientation as, as as what i want to do in life and did you did you um like was it later on that you kind of understood that the two cultures were special that you that you could embrace that yeah my my family was a, a, a traditional lebanese family my mother was uh, born in mexico but she also came from a, from a Lebanese background, but it, it was this mix of cultures where they were very traditional. We're, no, we were a middle-class uh, family based on downtown. So yeah, it was not common in, in any way. And, 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 and they used to work on, on, on trade. They sell uh, and produce uh, textiles and, 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 and clothing. So uh, I get my interest in art through my mother. No? She was always, uh, uh, eager to understand uh, 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 how to visit museums and or to spend time uh, at culture. And, and I think I, all that mix, in a way, combined, uh, makes me, uh, makes my interest into the creative fields uh, grow. And, and your creativity is boundless, Hector, because you do everything. Um, so, so talk to the students a little bit how you were able to, you know, start a successful um, business by, by doing all these things? Well, I, I always questioned myself when I was a student of design is why Mexican design is not recognized or is not represented either in Mexico or abroad. Like I told you before, we have an amazing culture, our heritage, we have ancestral skills, uh, history, and, and mostly a narrative. And, and well, uh, it seems like today I'm all over the place doing a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. so the effort is the same effort. Like I try, whenever I move into one direction, I try to understand it as a whole. So, so uh, for example, uh, we are based on a methodology. No, we we are a, a study that works in, 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 in as a philosophy with multidisciplinarity, and and and, and we are based in process. No, like everything starts. With the same methodology that 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 is not to have a style is to understand the context the moment the situation around a project and it has allowed me like i ask myself uh, more times uh, what i'm not going to do that i don't put a, a door of, of what i'm going to do who i am as a designer or what i'm gonna do i never define that no i, I just can tell you I don't work with uh, uh, cigarette brands. I don't work with, uh, I was asked to design a store that they sell fur, uh, no animal fur. And I say, I'm not gonna do that. So I can tell you what I don't do. In, in order right. of what I do, uh, I have worked with museums. I had worked with, uh, with culture. I have done, like you, you see the exhibition, Mi Casa, Your Casa, that we had uh, first at the High Museum, you see on, on on display now and, and, and it aims to bring a community and, and, and it gets like a new perspective now with, with COVID, COVID because we did with Nacho Cadena this installation like nine years ago uh, and it was mostly aimed to bring the community to gather around uh, culture or, or to integrate the community around uh, the museum no? and, and, and it, 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 it got immediately like a wider uh, uh, result that we were always uh, expecting. You know, it, it, yeah, it didn't only yeah. bring the, com the immediate community to the museum, you bring all the community of Atlanta uh, around. Explain your, your camaraderie with others, Hector, with um, other talents, because you seem to have um, be successful. You know, I've met so many of you, like different firms working together. I started at a certain moment to feel tired to be the tailor, no, to be the one that, that did everything uh, with my own. Like there was even sometimes that, that I feel myself, my brain dry. And, and, and then I understood that stopping being a tailor 
I'm becoming uh, more like an orchestra director, no? And, and sometimes I'm the one that plays the instrument, sometimes mm -hmm. I direct. And, and I realize something that I say to my students, like at the moment, you take out the ego out of the table. The only thing that it can happen is that you learn. So, so that becomes a philosophy. I start to collaborate with different disciplines, with other architects, with other designers. And, and my, my, my team now is like, it's, it's, it's a common thing at the studio. We understand multidisciplinarity as, as part of our, our essence. We understand that one plus one makes three. No, 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 it's not, it's not only uh, what we do together. And, and also is uh, to have a, a, a different perspective. Sometimes you cannot escape of, of what your eye is attracted to, but at the time you have another person in the table, you can you can mix uh, your 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 uh, your intentions with other people's intentions and create something new. And and that has become, I think, I started doing that like twelve years ago. I can tell you, I mostly started with Nacho Cadena. And now uh, we have a really wide, uh, 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 we work with many teams, not only in Mexico, but abroad. We even collaborate with, with Kensler for a headquarters in, in, in Mexico. So guys, that's so cool. That's, that's yeah, a cool. Yeah. But there's a great, but that's a great lesson for the students, which is, and, and, and you say it so, so easily, but it's not always that easy for people to understand the concept of collaboration. And that has, and I love what you said, that sometimes you're the orchestra leader and sometimes you're not. Um, but bringing, bringing your talents and your strengths to the table is, um, is what you want to do. Yeah, uh, like uh, at the end of the day, for example, you've seen an image of a query in, you know, is that like a, like a query of, of, of Marvel. And uh, talking about narrative and talking about collaboration, this is with a, like the beginning of a collaboration with a marble company. This is uh, the headquarters of the design center of Parca, a marble company that that we start to integrate in our body of work a, a, a component that either is social or is cultural. We are working with every any of our clients to integrate that, that factor. So we say, why to open another warehouse? Why to do one, one more warehouse? No? Why, why we don't do things in a different way? So, so we open this spot that is a design center that allows architects in Guadalajara or designers or creatives to visit the place is an is an open door place that you can have a a, 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 a talk there you can have a, a, a lecture you can give a conference you can give a concert you can go there and spend time in the library no one asks you why are you do, what are you doing there no and 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 for us it's part of this philosophy of understanding uh, the, the 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 design in a different world how we can approach to a spot and alter the immediate uh, context. No, so so this is for me collaboration. This is the possibility of understanding the world uh, in in a different way. This is a place that allow artists to exhibit that that shows you no, like this is the the size of the of the warehouse. But why should I want to go to this place to see? Well, you know you know why you want to go, but yeah. but what makes what makes it different? No, so we work made it in a different way and now we have made the second one in in, in miami that you know about no yes 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 yeah you know um, oh here's some so in miami it's not the same first of all that project won a best of year award and also made the cover of interior design so uh, yeah, it, I'm thankful and happy for it. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> no, but that, it was super, super special. Um, so in in Miami, we have we have a couple of the images here. This was this was not the kind of space that the other one was, but you were still able to make it special with the facade. So tell everybody about the facade. Yeah, in this case, after doing Guadalajara, this is a collaboration with with Superflex Studio. Uh, that that I, I I know them naturally. Many people know them because they are uh, artists that that well I, I admire, and and we had a chance to invite them to collaborate with this uh, project. So I decided to neutra neutralize uh, the expression of of my involvement, and we designed a tile. We decided to approach to to Wingwood, to to Miami, no, to to the neighborhood where everything is made in graffiti. And, and since we were selling materials to approach in a different way, 
and also uh, uh, expand the intention of ARCA being a company that promotes creativity and, and becomes a space uh, of, 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 of new understanding of, 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 of creativity. You know? So, so uh, well, towards uh, materials. And, and we invited uh, Superflex. I designed a tile that, that they uh, adapt and create this amazing facade. And wow. they were based on, a, on the Fibonacci uh, numbers and also in the colors of the of the Mexican uh, bills, the Mexican money. And they create this incredible uh, facade that is called like a force of nature. And for sure, it, it, it talks about how economies uh, define uh, countries and cultures. So in, on the inside, it's really neutral. No, Again, um, the strategy in this case for us was uh, to disappear, but to, to, to create the canvas for the expression of of uh, of uh, of, an, of a piece, no? so so we work in a rationalized uh, building. We did uh, alongside Superflex the the project, and is part of the amazing collaborations that that I really have never dreamed dreamed of, not to be able to collaborate to this, to a studio that is uh, uh, in Denmark that I admire, and, and and now we working together. Hector, Hector. So first of all, I have to say that I'm. Um, always so proud when I see some of your projects that actually make it to the States, right? Like you said, like Atlanta and now Miami. Someone was asking, what can you say to Americans? We have a question here that are trying to start their professional career, but don't know where to start or how to put themselves out there in the creative world. That's a hard question. <laughs> it's a hard question. Uh, and it's a thing that, that you know, I have also uh, been uh, confronted with and yeah. in in a personal way, and we are, what we do has uh, uh, has a lot of. We need to know how to live with with. Uh, it's, it's, don't don't take it in the wrong way. No, we need to 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 understand frustration as part of 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 uh, our everyday work. But is when you overcome that frustration. No, it's it's a it's a path that you need. A thing that you need to do over and over and over and over until until you really uh, get what you want in a way uh, and it's not a cliche because uh, you are seeing now projects that we have abroad but that was not the case 20 years ago that was not the case right. uh, even 15 years ago no i've been like mostly uh, i've been with my studio almost 30 years now but I can tell you the first 12 or 15 years were, were of almost under the radar. So it's not about also being known or not being known. It's about the work to have a voice on its own and to be able, as soon as you fulfill a need and you understand clearly the context and the project start not, not only to talk uh, with the people for that specific project, but start to talk abroad, then, then there's a sense of, of, of something that has been developed in an honest and, and clear way. Yeah, it, 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 as you say, like we, you know, students are looking at this work. I'm sure they are completely in awe, but it's it's a it's slow and steady, right? And then and you make relationships, you collaborate, things start to happen, and then the next thing happens. Um, it's it's not a, it's certainly not an easy fix, um, but but a beautiful journey, right? Because you love what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really, really, uh, I was telling to my girlfriend a few days ago that that I am really still waking up every day to to enjoy my 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 activities. No, for sure, it has not everything is happiness. No, everything has a, a, a like like a dark not a dark side, but but complications and uh, and and it's not as as romantic as it sounds. Mm -hmm. but, Part of what it is, no. So I start to uh, really uh, give value to the moments that are uh, the ones that construct my career, and I understand the rest as part of what allows me to to grow and to evolve and to learn. No? I understand, and and it's part. I think it's the essence of our philosophy. We're based on process. I don't believe in the start to search for 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 a result. The result is a consequence of a good process. With a good process, you can have many results. Right. And this and let's just for a moment, um, this project, Tori Tori, which is which is splendid. Um, it, it's not it was opening right during COVID, which is uh, it is really sad. They opened a few weeks before, like two weeks before COVID. 
and it's a it's a huge space it can hold up to 150 uh, guests and now it's sad to see it with you no know, with four five six guests and and, and yeah i hope in uh, uh, soon these guys will come back uh, because they are uh, a group that has been here for many many years in mexico we have worked with them this is the fifth restaurant that we make to them and 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 for me like the the project is based on a book that i love that is the, the in the praise of shadows of tanisaki uh, is how uh, light can create the whole environment you see on the on the uh, right hand side wall uh, these uh, figures like a pictograms that are the the abstraction of of kanjis you know that that, that in a way uh, as a, a, a high relief uh, uh, so I'm, the gonna light, another, the I'm gonna find another image too that you have. Yeah. yeah, that 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 relief is like incredible. In a second. And and it's made with two materials. And this is yeah. just plywood, all the all the places plywood and wood naturally, but well this is wood and, 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 and color. So so uh, the the main structures are uh, inspired on the armors of the samurais, the the dos. Uh, they're called do and and they cover one of them covers the the chimney of the tupanyaki and the other one is it it, it holds the 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 grab and go store no in a way it it uh, marks the the grab and go so with those uh, elements uh, that are on the opposite sides of the of the of the restaurant it defines the whole essence of the place no and and i i want something that was uh, striking and 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 that that shows my respect for the skills and tradition of the Japanese culture. You're gonna hear me a lot saying tradition, skills, narrative, which are words that I love. No? Yeah, and let's show one more, and then we'll bring Carlos back on, and we'll ask, we'll answer a few more questions. But this also shows, like, the really different scale that you work in, right, Hector? Yeah, this is this is a project that that, that I love. Uh, that, that, that I love I, it too. <laughs> I, I, I also did it with with Nacho uh, Cadena, and uh, it's a it's a brand of perfumes that uh, aims to to talk about the botanical of the Americas. No, there's a there's a lesson in plants because there's no borders. No, like uh, the plants doesn't recognize borders, so is the is a is the botanical of the Americas, and and we uh, work this project in order to create a, a niche fragrance that. As soon as you finish to use it, it has an afterlife. So we create an object uh, that is inspired in, in in the geometry of nature, but it's also inspired in, in 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 well, this is like the table of of where we exhibit the table of of Shinu, where we uh, talk about the the process, and we have some molds there, but also it's like the table of the naturist, where you can uh, smell the different aromas and have part of the essences that compose the the fragrances reflected on the expression of that table so we 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 believe in a in a holistic approach in the projects in a 360 degrees experience to create a narrative you no know, like a emotional design for us is really relevant and and not 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 to forget the fact that uh, it needs to be logical it needs to be again honest no we don't we don't use in in chinu any any products that come from animal sources no and this is again also other piece uh, that involves small workshops we work a lot with artisans and workshops aiming to promote the, uh, those uh, skills we have a, a tremendous uh, uh, artisans in mexico and uh, well this is also based in the book of prey in the praise of shadows the, of tanisaki and it's how light travels to surfaces no and this is a lamp that is made out of brass and, and aims to to uh, to allow the light to flow around the surface. Um, I'm gonna wait. I'm just I just want to share these last images. I'm gonna pull up if we could bring if we could bring um, Carlos back. Uh, just because I cannot believe how quick everything is. Oh my god! Oh my god! We need like five hours. But look at the beautiful, um, glorious images. Carlos, when you see see these images, don't you want to specify it for a project? Oh, they're beautiful, really beautiful. Yeah, they're really, really, they're really, really special. Um, so, interestingly enough, let I just want to know from the two of you, polar opposites, not in terms of high quality design, but in just in terms of you know, Hector, you've 
um, you, you know, you've managed to create your own studio. Carlos worked for a very, very big company. It's a different mindset, right? So, Carlos, what do you take away? I, I know that you get inspired by Hector and, you know, completely vice versa. Yeah, no, I mean, I, what I love, I love about everything that Hector was showing is the fact that it's, it's all about uh, experience and, and basically that, that human uh, interaction and human relationship and also the, the narratives that are associated with it. You know, how do you tell stories and how do you use the work to connect with people and, and deliver a message around something that matters? And I think that's ultimately what design is all about. And, and by the way, the power of design, why design is so important in our culture and in our society. So yeah, it's really fantastic. I want to make sure Danielle, can you come back? Can, can you come back too? And Hector, like when you see that, like Carlos is working for these like big, big heavyweights, it's kind of daunting to think about, right? Well, uh, I, I really, uh, many times I try to, 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 to understand, uh, I'm working now on the bigger scale projects that I have worked ever before. And, and I cannot imagine what is to, to work on that scale. For, for sure, it requires a structure that, that has a, a, a different type of rules, no? And, and for sure, for me, as a, as a designer, but mostly as an academic, uh, try to understand a structure like that, uh, it becomes something appealing and attractive. Yeah, for sure. I could, I could see you collaborating with Gensler on, like you said, like on other projects where you bring that other element to it. Danielle, what did you, what do you think about, what, what kind of questions do you have that you think the students would want to know? Uh, I mean, just amazing work. I just want to go. Um, amazing work. Thank you, both of you. It's, it's just great to see all the uh, inspirational images that you guys have to share with us. And I think that one thing is, um, is there one piece of advice that you could give our students as they move forward in their design career? What would be that one kind of push that you would you would share with them? Um, I'll go first. Um, so I, I will say I will say that there's you should always keep in mind three important things. Uh, I will say that make no little plans. You mm -hmm. got to think big. Uh, you always have to take the long view. I call it you know think like a gardener. You can it, it, you know. Um, you can beat nature and nature works slowly for great um, you know, outcomes. And then the last one is everything you do in life, you have to do it for a higher purpose. And by the way, you can't create compartments and put designer and life separate, it's one. You gotta live by these meanings and you gotta design by those same values and, and drivers. Beautiful, beautiful. I completely agree. Hector, what, what about you? Besides what Carlos <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I agree with it. Is uh, just that there's no formula on, on on how to 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 do a studio to become a designer. I think you need to be sensitive to your context and uh, with your moment at the place with your base. It, it, it is an exercise of of uh, of being constant and to be patient and uh, mostly to be passionate. But but there's not like I'm gonna give you the three advices of how to become uh, no a successful designer that doesn't exist. No, it, right. it, it really happens uh, out of passion. It really happens out of commitment. It really happens out of trying to understand. Mostly, be honest about what surrounds you and how could you can approach uh, with your context uh, and and see what you have at hand. And, and, you know, just in terms of from an editorial perspective, I mean, the one thing that um, I always encourage everybody, especially in a day like today, when we, we're talking about um, your heritage and where you were brought up, and some of that sometimes get, get lost when we're talking about the business and, and getting a job. But it's so important for the students to hear where you come from because they should know that their voice matters. And you're trying to, as a designer, cultivate your voice and become the original person that you should be. And that's what we look for all the time in the magazine. You know, we're looking for originality and harness your voice. I mean, that's, that is who you are. That is your true authentic self are all the things that when you see what Carlos, you know, not, you know, not speaking the language, so became an amazing sketcher and that everyone took notice of that. And, you know, Hector in that very, um, you know, working in all these dis disciplines and allowing himself um, to um, grow in that way, that's who they are. So find out who you are. Yeah. 
Yeah, you say it perfect. <laughs> Listen, guys, I love, first of all, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Love you guys so much. I'm I sorry. It, it's, we're already late. I don't know how. <laughs> it's like <laughs> crazy. Um, but um, thank you for inspiring the students. I know you're inspired students out there, right? You're like dancing and having thank a good time. Yes. Bernardo, close this <laughs> out. Till we're going to take a break and then um, come back with our emerging designers. But yeah. our big heavy hitters right here. Hector SRS for Studios. Carlos Martinez from Gensler. Big love. Thank, thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Scott. Thank, thank you. you. This truly has thank been you. great. Bye. Really, thank you. I mean, Hector, Carlos, Daniel, uh, and of course, Cindy, you all have been fantastic. I'm pretty sure that all our students are thrilled. So very much thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, and Cindy will be joining us next um, for the next panel as moderator as well. So now we're going to take a quick, quick break, but we'll be back in, in just a few. Again, muchísimas gracias a todos. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.